I'm coming to you live on tape from Sydney, Ohio. And as you can already see, this week's movie is Double Dragon, which is probably one of the worst movies ever made. I watched it three times this week, and I regret every one. I never want to see it again. So strap on, we're going to get right to it. This movie begins with a voiceover by Robert Patrick, who plays our villain. And he's one of the few actors who do a good job in this movie. Talking about the Double Dragon medallion and how it came to be. And then we go to China, where men are attacking other men. Using martial arts, yes, this is a martial arts movie. And I'll get into why that is a bad thing here in a minute. And we see someone using a whip. And we find out the men they're trying to get information from have cut out their tongues. But the whip person follows a man into a cave and gets part of the double dragon medallion. And then rips off her hood and reveals she's a woman. And says, Shuko, we got it. And then we go to Robert Patrick, who is still narrating the Double Dragon Medallion. Who is apparently Shuko. And reveals that he only got half, but he won the whole thing. And use it to turn into a spirit. And orders them to find the other half, which we see on a lady who will later be revealed as Shatori, helping the, coaching the Lee brothers, Jimmy and Billy, who will later learn their names, in a martial arts tournament, or a martial arts fight. Because this happens in New Angeles in 2007, after the big quake. Remember the big quake in 2000? I don't either. But in martial arts fighting, and Jimmy can clearly do it, and Billy is played by Scott Wolf, and we all wish they would have hired someone who actually knew martial arts to play the white kid. <laughs> Instead of a name. Well, Billy gets them disqualified, and then they get into a big fight, where Billy was probably useless. And then we go to the news, hosted by George Hamilton and Vanna White, with Andy Dick as the weatherman, talking about the curfew, which we then find out Jimmy and Billy and Jatori are out past. And Billy tells the Jimmy to pull over because there's a woman he likes. So they're out past curfew, and they should know that it's either a hooker or it's a gang member. But it turns out to be a gang member, and we meet a Bobo. <sighs> Who, for 50 bucks, he'll leave him alone. But instead, he wants the double dragon medallion. And Chitori tells him to drive, and we get a needless car chase. Which is eventually won by the Lee brothers. And a Bobo is scaled away by Power Core, led by Alyssa Milano, who plays Marion, who we see endless shots of her butt. I don't know what the director had had with had with Alyssa Milano's butt if he was just obsessed with it, but we see like four or five shots in this movie of Alyssa Milano's butt. This is supposed to be a family movie, but then again, so is Ghostbusters, and we saw a scene. Where supposedly Red Ray got head from a ghost when the song said, Bustin' makes me feel good. <laughs> so then Jimmy, Billy, and Shatori go to their home, which is an old theater in the ruins of New Angeles. And Shatori tells them about the sacred double dragon medallion. And how they must keep it safe. And we see Marianne, 
who's hiding from her father, not letting her know he's she's power core, the power core leader, but telling him that power core is not terrorists, while her father, who's chief of police, is telling her that they are. Then a Bobo reveals to Shuko that Jimmy and Billy Lee have the medallion. And a Bobo gets experimented on, but screams before he's even put on the chair, as happens a lot in this movie. I don't know what the director was thinking. Apparently about Alyssa Milano's butt. So then Shuko shows up at a shows up at the theater and a fight a fight ensues with Scott well, Scott Wolf doing more comedy fighting. Who's it was Billy, Billy doing more comedy fighting, and Jimmy actually doing martial arts, and Shatori doing martial arts. And the bad guy's doing martial arts. And a Bobo shows up, just gets his ass kicked. Now a giant mutant Stay Puft Marshmallow Man type guy. But Shuko goes into Shatori's body and they stop him and they stop her and lock her in a cage for Shuko to come out and light the theater on fire. But they broke a gas main throwing bricks at a Bobo so the whole theater is going to blow. They free Shatori from the cage but Shatori stop, locks the door on the boys as they're going out. To stop Shuko. So Shatori dies in an explosion. And then the boys are depressed. Billy's looking at a photograph in a lunchbox, which we know nothing about. But for some reason, the camera pans to the lunchbox you know, in the ocean as J after Jimmy threw it there. And Shuko goes and rallies the gangs. Go after the boys and cause mayhem during the day. Which the chief of police had to deal with them that they'd only come out at night. But now they're being out during the day. And the boys run into some gang members. And the gangs chase them into this derelict house by the water. And the boys escape on a boat. Followed by two gang members on speed on jet skis. Gang members fire rockets at them. But the river that runs through old Hollywood, or Hollywood as we know it, is flammable, catches fire, and the boys seemingly die in an explosion. But really, they're alive and they escape. But they seem to be dead. And they order their bodies drug up and a double dag dragon found in the river. <clears throat> so they escaped. Remember, they escaped. And they go to find Power Core and Marianne to, get, to help him fight Shuko. While Marianne tortures a Bobo with a spinach diet. Remember, this move's made up for families. Even though we do sit, see like five or six shots of Marianne's ass. But a Bobo knows nothing. Which I have a feeling is what a Bobo knew all his life. So Marianne orders him locked up, and then the boys show up, tell Marianne a story, and they can't get the dragon, double dragon to do anything, and then explain that he killed Shatori, and so they break into Shuko's headquarters and get found out after trying to steal the other half of the medallion with a pin and a, and a rope. Because how else are you going to get found out? And Marianne is revealed to her father to be the leader of Power Corps. Marianne's father, the chief of police, who's there, because Shuko's trying to bribe him into letting the gangs rule the world, or rule New Angeles, then fights Lash, who's the girl with the bullwhip. And Marianne and the boys go down this fireman's pole in the corner 
down to the lab where Bobo was worked on, followed by Shuko, who uses the power of the souls, soul dragon, double dragon's medallion, to go into his monsters that he worked on and fight them. Well, something gets damaged, and things are shutting down down there, and only Billy and Marianne make it out. Jimmy gets captured. And this is when we're going to a thrilling conclusion. And a lot of the silliness ends. Which we're all thank God for that. Because this movie is very silly. Of Double Dragon. So Billy and Marianne are back at Power Corps headquarters. The chief of police orders those men to go out on night watch. Go out and comb the night and round up these gang members, which they refuse. But he doesn't. Chief of police goes out at night. And the gangs attack Power Corps headquarters, leading to a fight, which makes Alyssa Milano, play, who plays Marianne, look like a better fighter than Billy, who's supposed to be a martial artist. And they capture Lash. And a Bobo breaks free because he realizes he's ugly as fuck now. And then Jimmy shows up. Who's got, who's got Shuko's spirit in him. And him and Billy fight. Only for Billy to, re to get the power of the double dragon in him. Now he can't be harmed. So... So Shuka says, fine, I'll just kill Jimmy. Well, Billy stops him and beats up Jimmy, getting Shuko out of him. But Shuko gets the double dragon and uses the power to turn into two ninja warriors with swords, but it's in the darkness. So Bobo tells Marianne to hit the lights. Lights come on, and Billy and Jimmy beat up the dark warriors and get the double dragons. And unlock the spirit, which Shatori comes on and says something. And they get these fancy ninja outfits. No, oh, Billy, I wouldn't call a ninja by any sense of the imagination. And they beat up Shuko. And then Jimmy goes into Shuko's body, slaps him around a couple times with his own hands, writes the cop a uh, uh, check for $129 million, chief police for $129 million to fund the New Angeles Police Department and then goes to jail, but jumps out of body before he goes to jail. And the rest of the police show up to arrest the rest of the gang members. And that is the end to Double Dragon. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Seriously, Mr. Beast should have a contest. Whoever can sit through Double Dragon the most times wins like $50,000. I sat through it three times this week, but I had to take a break after like 45, 50 minutes because just that fucking stupid. I mean, this movie is horrible. You should go watch it. It's on Prime and Tubi, and I'm sure other things. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, another one of my songs. It is the bad movie song, because this was a bad movie, and that is what inspired this song. Damn it, I'm going to go over time. As far as movies go, yours was absurd. It was so bad, there's not even a word. It was the opposite of classic. The writer must have been spastic. Action was laughable to a degree was so funny, I slapped my knee. 
That's not what you were going for. That's why you should head out the door. The actors must all have been desperate for money. The director must have been blackmailed for touching honeys to get them to do this shit. The producers must have had a fit. Now as far as the dialogue, I'd just like to say, I've heard better from horses with mouths full of hay. The special effects weren't bad at all. The movie was made in 1955 in the fall. This movie must have cost a lot of money to make. You'd be better off putting it in an oven to bake. There's one thing about the movie I liked. When it ended and I could go on with my life. The, the actors must all have been desperate for money. The director must have been blackmailed for touching honeys. To get them to do this shit. Surprise, the producers didn't have a fit. Why, oh why, was this movie made? Why, oh why, did it not just fade? <laughs> the greedy producers trying to make a buck. Turning out shit like this and not giving a fuck. The actors must all have been desperate for money. The director must have been blackmailed for touching honeys to get them to do this shit. The producers are full of it. So that is the bad movie song. Tune in next week where we, where I will be reviewing a Marvel movie. I am not going to reveal which one. That is part of the surprise. And we will have another movie song and we will have another song about whatever's on my whatever's on whatever the movie made me feel about. 